this afternoon. You're listening to the Todd LeBorowitz Show, Real Estate Radio and Salem Broadcast Network, WRC, 1260 AM. I'm your host, Todd Laborowit. This segment is brought to you by Topaz Mortgage, yours truly, Todd Laborowit, our preferred partner for doing mortgages. And in the studio with us today is Hill Slowinski. He is a real estate agent with WC and A.N. Miller Realtors, part of Christie's International Real Estate. Welcome to the studio. Well, thank you, Todd, for having me. I love having you here. You're everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but close. Well, everywhere I'm going, it seems you're everywhere. Yeah, see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> now, how long have you been in real estate? Since 78. Since 78. <clears throat> and you have, I mean, you're, you, you've been like on every radio station, newspaper there is. I, I mean, I, it's better to put what you're missing. I'm not sure what I'm missing. <laughs> I try to know everything I can. Okay. I, had, I mean, it's, explain real estate. Like, what are people pulling you into by being you know, such the media talent? Well, because we have an in-depth knowledge of what's going on in the neighborhoods, what's going on in the community, what's going on in the county <clears throat> and in the state. Um, I, I stay involved with what's going on with new development, uh, with, especially with the housing. You know, most, the first question people ask is, how's the market? And it really depends on what they really want to know. And what they really want to know is what's going on in their own neighborhoods. So when they hear the mass media saying the market is up or activity levels are up or sales are down or prices are down, that's such a general comment to begin with. You really have to dive into the details to find out what's going on in individual markets and neighborhoods. And that's where the expertise of the agents comes in. Now, is it you <clears throat> that is tied into all this, or is it the actual company that's tied into all this educating you? Because you're really well-connected. But I have to be. Um, I'm on the board of directors for the Chamber of Commerce, the Chevy Chase Chamber of Commerce. I'm also involved with the Charles County Chamber of Commerce, because those are areas where I do my most, most of my business. I'm basically in Montgomery County, northwest D.C., and on down to Charles County, and also northern Virginia, Alexandria, Arlington, McLean, Falls Church. And these are all places where I've lived. So I can relay the experience of being there and know what the amenities are in the community, what the schools are like, how far it is to commute, what are the transportation issues, what are the transportation benefits. Um, and buyers and sellers, buyers want to know that because if they're not familiar with it, they need to be. Sellers need to know that we can reach the global market that might be interested in their houses. And that's where the Christie's affiliation comes in. So you're the ultimate expert in real estate. Well, it depends on... <laughs> It depends on the market. Well, I'm going to show, yeah. for our listeners, I'm going to show you how good Hill is. Tell me about the market. I'm, I know as of today, tell me what as you know about today, the market. Yeah. Let's break it down into five or four areas. The, the D.C. market right now, we have uh, the July statistics saying listings are up, sales are down, the volume of sales, okay? The number of new listings are pending sales um, is down a little bit compared to a year ago. Prices are up slightly and inventory is up. What that really means is that we have a mixed market in D.C. itself. Now, when you take neighborhoods from northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest, put them all together, that's the general picture. What's happening in specific neighborhoods is the real information that our buyers or sellers need to know. Sellers need to know what's, what to expect when they sell their house. Buyers need to know what are the trends in housing. Um, in Montgomery County, we have sales are down. Uh, pending sales are up a l slightly. Inventory is up. Listings are up. But that also has an effect where prices are down. The more inventory you have, the more potential purchases, or, uh, potential homes for sale are competing for those buyers. Okay. In Northern Virginia, sales are up. Pen uh, pending uh, sales are down. Inventory is up, way up in Virginia. Uh, listings are up and prices are up slightly. But the, you have to take this in context of where we were at the peak. Everybody remembers the heyday of the mid-2000s. But in Virginia, right now, we're only at 44% of inventory of what we had at the peak. Uh, if you take a look at D.C., we're at 33%. So that's a huge amount of inventory that we don't have available. Um, when you talk about Charles County in Southern Maryland, the reason I bring that up is because it is so different from what happens inside and around the Beltway. This, these are the external counties. You know, we get the Spotsylvania County or Frederick um, and down to Charles County and St. Mary's. That's a different economy. The recovery has not started yet there. Um, you know, in the northern wow. areas of those areas, there, there's increasing activity, but in the southern sections, there's not. If you look at what's happening, it's really a, a fluid situation in each of these jurisdictions. 
D.C. is back up to about where it was at peak. It's still down about 5 or 7%. Uh, Montgomery County is down about 15% from where it was at peak. Charles County is still down 30 or 40%. Now, distance has a factor, but prices have dropped and are beginning to come back up there slightly. Prices have peaked here and are beginning to drop back down. So we see the appreciation rate slowing inside the Beltway while it's increasing faster outside. And it's just the nature of the market and the economy. The economy is taking a hell of a long time to recover around here. So, it, you know, the buyers and sellers have to know this because it impacts what they're doing if they're selling and what they're doing if they're buying. Right, because yeah. they're obviously selling to buy. Yeah, exactly. And what do you see the future uh, six months down the road after going from today? Once again, it depends on where you're looking. But overall, it's going to be a slow, moderate increase in price appreciation. Um, in the long term, nationally, we're going to get back to about three and a half, three point five, three point six percent 3.5%, 3.6% appreciation for housing prices, and that's nationally. We saw a tremendous uptick where you heard about 5%, 7% increase in pricing last year. But that's because it dropped so much, the pendulum started swinging back, now it's coming back down to norm. Norm since 2000 is about 3.5%. So we're getting back to there. And if you drew a straight line on a chart showing where we were in 2000 to where we are now, we are about at 3.5% overall. Like I said, you're a genius when it comes down to the statistics on this. Yeah, but you had the anomaly of going up during the the peak of the housing sales, dropping back down, and coming back up. So if you draw a straight line, we're back up to about normal appreciation. That's what the projections are. So it's a good time to sell. And a good time to buy because interest rates are tremendously low. Right. You know, people get nervous when they see interest rates going from four and a quarter to four and three-eighths percent. I said, listen, when I bought my first house in 1978, it was (laughs) 16.25%. Buy now. This is free money. (laughs) Well, what I'd like to offer you, our listeners, is the opportunity to get in touch with Hill Slowinski. Uh, Just call or text me at 301-467-8444. That number, again, is 301-467-8444. And I can put you guys together, and you can uh, talk statistics and housing. Uh, Now, moving forward, let's learn more about you. Now, I know you through your sister. Yes. Uh, vet, uh, she's my... One of four sisters. <laughs> one of four sisters. Yes. She's uh, our veterinarian. Right. And one of the best I've yep. ever met. Uh, and uh, we were talking at a networking event. That's right. And uh, it's just amazing the knowledge that you have. What are some hobbies that you like? Let's, let's learn more about you as an individual. Well, this has always been one of my key interests in real estate. Um, People ask me, how do you describe yourself? And uh, one client did it for me the best. And he turned around, he was introducing me to somebody else, and he said, here's Hill. He's a Washingtonian by birth. He's a realtor by trade, my realtor by trade. And he's a native Washingtonian, um, a lawyer by training. So uh, I kind of adopted that as my slogan. Washingtonian by birth, (laughs) lawyer by training, realtor by choice. Um, And it's true. That's one of the things I've always wanted to be involved with. I enjoy working with people. I'm from a large family. I'm very much of a a people person. What people really need help with is there's a tremendous amount of information out on the Internet on housing, especially with the new websites, with Zillow and with Trulia and with the combination of those, and Zillow is now buying Trulia. People have more information at their fingertips to find a house than they ever did before. That can lure them into thinking they know more about housing than they really do. The problem is people get confused and they get stressed out because they see conflicting information out there. Um, You can find a house. You can go and look at it. But then you need somebody who has the expertise to know all the transactional details involved with housing, uh, with making a purchase. This is the largest single investment most people will ever make. And in this area, you're talking about an average sale of about $580,000, $600,000. Easily in Northwest, they're over a million. Usually in Charles County, it's about 250, 275. But still, those people are just as interested in what they're doing, and they need somebody to help them through it. It's interesting you say that because we always tell our listeners to be careful of the Internet because every time I get sick, I put down my symptoms. I go to that one website, and it's like I got two days to live. But you need a doctor. But You, need, you still need a doctor. <laughs> I understand that, <laughs> but it's just the Internet scares the daylights out of you. Yeah. And then we have a newborn. And I go on the internet, I'm doing research, I go to my wife, I say, this is how I feel about this topic. Right. And she comes back, she goes, I have two degrees in this. Who are you going to listen to, the internet or (laughs) what I've been studying Mm -hmm. at GW? So it's it's interesting. You always want to stick with the expert. Well, it's also the paradox of choice. 
um, you have so many choices to make. You get paralyzed. You get consumed and overwhelmed. You don't know what choice to make because if you buy a new cell phone today, it's probably got you know 500 times as much information or te- uh, potential than you need. I need it to ring when somebody's calling me. I need to be able to see my email, whatever. I don't, you know, I don't need a whole lot of things on it, but it's there. Um, actually, I do need a lot. It's my lifeblood. <laughs> my lifeline. <laughs> He's always but, walking around you know, with an iPad. <laughs> yeah. Well you, well, you need the iPad. You need the smartphone. You need the tablet. You know, all that. Um, but the information that's there makes my job much more portable. I'm not tied to the office. I can get the information for you right here, right now. At the same time, the information that you have brings you up to speed with what's available. You need to. You, what you don't know is the 40 to 50 people that I get in touch with in consu- going to uh, finish that transaction. Once you put a contract on the house, you need to know, or I need to know, I have to be in touch with the appraisers, the surveyors, the loan officers, the lenders, all of their assistants. We need to know about the title attorneys. We need to get your legal counsel if it's held in an LLC. We need to get in touch with all these people and put this transaction together. That's why FISBOs are so difficult. People try to sell on their, on their own, and then they fall apart because they don't know how to negotiate or work with all these people involved. Perfect. In every transaction, from listing the house to selling it, you've got about 70 legal documents, believe it or not. You need somebody who knows those legal documents. You don't want to st- take the time to study them and think you understand them. I mean, we have the training and we do continuing education every year. So, And I always find stuff in those contracts. When a contract comes in, mm-hmm. I'm always calling the client, well, did you know this? Just to make sure that they know. Sure. Yeah. And it amazes me how they're always different a little bit. Well, they look the same, but they always look a little tad different. Well, they change every year. The Contracts and Clause Committee goes through and changes the regional contracts whenever there's another improvement they want to make. We know about it when that happens. The general consumer doesn't. We have to be able to explain it to them. We are representing the buyer's and the seller's best interests. Perfect. Well, by the way, if you're just tuning in, I have with me Hill Slowinski, real estate agent with WC and A.N. Miller Realtors, part of Christie's International Real Estate. I'm your host, Todd Laborowit, and you're listening to Salem Broadcast Network, WRC 1260 AM. Now, we only have a little bit of time left, but... Out of all the companies out here, why did you pick WC and A.N. Miller's Christie's International Real Estate? I looked at several of them and interviewed several of them before I joined Miller as an agent. Miller still rose to the top of the heap, um, only because I knew about them since uh, all my life, because I was in Miller neighborhoods. WC and A.N. Miller was a development company that started in 1912. So the individuals who were leading the company were people that I knew and felt very familiar with. Um, I also knew about Long and Foster. It was separate from Miller at the time. And I was interviewed by the head of the office here in Bethesda, which is the most successful office in in the system, Um, and other local realtors and brokers who said they said that they could not touch the quality of the continuing education and the support that Miller and Long and Foster provided as, as, as agents. And it's a tremendous amount of support that really goes to the benefit of our clients. Perfect. And what, what is Christie's International Real Estate? Is that a tag on or is that the whole name? No, Christie's International Real Estate is an exclusive affiliation that we have. Um, it's a global marketing uh, program that we have. We are part of the Christie's Auction House. So any mm. Christie's client from anywhere around the world who wants to look at property in the U.S. comes to us. Perfect. Well, there you have it. Hill Slowinski, one of the best out there. Get in touch with us if you want to get in touch with him. 